is, guys. She is absolutely gorgeous. I love her so I much. I miss you. <laughs> and so tonight, we're going to be talking about domestic violence. And I know you've been with me um, twice already. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> and you've told your story. And so tonight, I think what we're going to do is we, if you want to revisit a little, a little bit of it, and let's just mm -hmm. talk about some of the aspects of domestic violence. We just want to make um, everyone aware what domestic violence is. And, you know, with October being Domestic Violence Awareness Month, this is the mm -hmm. time that we are, um, you know, we're remembering the victims that we lost to domestic violence. We also right. are celebrating with the survivors of domestic violence, but we also want to bring awareness to domestic violence. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So, Mashari, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing good. Doing good? Um, busy, but good. Uh, these children of mine, I have um, 15 year old twins now, so they're driving and varsity cheerleader and track and um they're oh, in 10th yeah, grade they're you so pretty busy. they definitely keep me busy but um i love it so that and, and it's a boy and a girl right it's a boy and a girl yes that was that's yes. really good that was god ordained <laughs> it was that's what i told the <laughs> lord i wanted and that's what he gave me and so all at one time. <laughs> <laughs> right I was a little older when I did it, so I was like, yeah, let's, can, we, can we just do this once? It would be great. It would be great, great, great. Well, you're blessed so, yes. and highly favored. So Thank you. Yes. When we spoke on last year in uh, mm -hmm. October, you were telling mm -hmm. me about your, um, basically your life, and you were telling yeah. me about some of the, the, you know, situations that you found yourself in as a young person. And one of uh -huh. those was actually getting involved with someone who um, was very toxic in your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So can you kind of yes. bring us up to date on, you know, how did that, you know, how did you um, find yourself involved with someone, you know, who was not good for you? Um. For me personally, uh, it actually it started off for us as a friendship. Really, mm -hmm. when I when I think back and look back on it, we had went to school together, and that's just kind of how it started. Because you know my parents were real strict; they you know did not let me you know date and all this and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So really, that's how it that's just how it started, and I think that was just kind of like the foundation for it. Um, but I would say that what the catalyst, I won't say that there was one particular catalyst, mm -hmm. um, but I'll just say that coming from, um, a, an abusive childhood mm -hmm. and a lot of childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. So it's like I swapped one trauma for another trauma. So one version of abuse for another version of abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and so that just kind of opened the door. Um, it kind of like just, I don't want to say set me up, but it just kind of set me up to kind of mm -hmm. be almost like, um, I don't want to say a per um, for failure mm -hmm. <laughs> to be a perfect like victim mm -hmm. for him because I didn't have close bonds to the people in my family. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the first people I had shared with what was going on um, mm -hmm. in my childhood, what had happened. Uh, and initially he was like, you, you want me to do something about it? And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> really? Like you would like, wait a minute. Um, and you know, so that, that that initial care and kind of protection mm -hmm. that I felt I didn't have is kind of, you know, what just kind of mm -hmm. drew me in even more. Mm -hmm. And initially, like I said, I didn't I didn't see that. I heard that about him, but I did not see that about him. And so by the time I began to see that, I was estranged from my family for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I had like been out on my own. And so he'd already you know, been talking and known each other for a couple years. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm just in too deep. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm like, well maybe this is just as good as it's gonna get for me. Yeah. And so um, he was a well known you know. he's a well known person. 
in your community. Yes. Yeah. So he that, was. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure that intrigue of having someone who was well known and uh, just the whole aspect of just, you know, that love bombing and just feeling like, oh my goodness, I can't believe he chose me. Is that something you Right. Don't... And you always want to see the good, you know, like I wanted to see the good in yeah. him. I wanted to, like, you could do this. You could be more than this. You could, mm -hmm. you know, do this and what we could do together. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, there's a little bit of excitement mm -hmm. and knowing that wherever I went, whatever, what happened, like, just about untouchable. You yeah, know, so like, I don't, you I don't like worry he, about that happening. Yeah, you felt like he had your back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he did, and he wouldn't, you know, to, and it, I know it's like kind of crazy, people were like, but he wouldn't let anything, anyone else do anything to me, I'll say that. Okay. So, it was like, I didn't have to worry, if I went out, I was like, oh, I'm not worried. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> you, you know, didn't we went realize, out together, I was like, I'm not worried. Yeah, but you didn't realize the danger was with him, right? And it was. Yeah. And it was, and it was. Mm -hmm. and it was. Live, yeah. so so yeah how when did it first begin when did you first feel like you were in in some type of danger you know what i probably i i can't say like i knew i was in danger mm -hmm. like all the time knew because i would have told you this is not I'm not a, I'm not a victim. This is not domestic uh, violence. It's not just what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say like the like the first time that he actually just hit me and when he slapped me uh, when I was in college at 18, I'll never forget it. We had gotten into a fussing and arguing about something and I was asking him about some girl um, I heard that he was starting to mess around with. Um, and like before then, he would, you know, kind of raise his voice at times if I wasn't doing what he wanted me to do or wasn't where, you know, he could reach me. Like, where you at? Where you going? He would, like, pop up at places. But it just, it wasn't anything. And I don't know if it's, um, the, you know, I was drinking a lot back then. I was still dealing with a lot back then as well, in addition to him um, just kind of being out there. So I was just like, oh, you know, he just cares. He mm -hmm. just wants to see me. You know what I mean? You, gotta, you know, get a, you get a little like, uh, let yeah. me, you know, let yeah. me get to where I need to be. But it was, but he had never really went through with it, so I never got that beat down. I heard that other, you know, women had gotten, and um, you know, so even like when he slapped me the first time, it was like, wait, what? What just happened? Mm -hmm. But I didn't process it like that. I was just like, okay, you know. I was mad, of course, like you say, the love bombing, I'm sorry, I love you, come on, you know, whatever, you'll get over it, um, kind of stuff. And so you just kind of move on, move on. And then, because the next time something happened was so kind of far, it was, they were so spaced out, um, you know, that the, like the, I think the, the first time I could say he really just really, um, you know, kind of fought me and, almost broke my nose and everything like that. Like that time was what years, four years mm -hmm. from the first time I first got slapped. Um, and so, you know, it may be a little shaking here mm -hmm. or, you know, a little slap, slap there, but mm -hmm. this was just the straight knockdown drag out. Um, and so even though it had been building to that, mm -hmm. this was the first time that it happened. And so, of course, at that point, I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. You know, I, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I was upset. I was scared. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the people from crisis services came to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't have nothing to say to you. You know, I was like, this is like, it, yeah. it still wasn't like, I'm not a victim. Like, yeah, this happened, mm -hmm. but you know, this, and then I was so ashamed. Mm -hmm. I was so ashamed. I was just like, you know, everyone's just looking at you. And at the time, mm -hmm. I couldn't even see my face. So I didn't realize my face was swelling and all this stuff. The police are trying to talk to me. And I was just like, I don't have nothing to say. You know, you know this and you know that. And I was like, I don't have nothing to say. And I had called my mom. And me and my mom were not on good terms at that time. And I was like, what's she going to do? Like, I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, 21 at this point. So I was like, I'm fully grown. You know, yeah, so thinking you I'm still fully grown, kind of grown. rebellious in that time. So, because um, we just weren't on good terms at that time. And so it was just like, 
you know, I felt just like, you know, like literally kind of like now lights just shining, everyone just staring, you're being judged, you don't get it. And I'm, I'm not even processing what has just happened. So I'm trying to process in front of people, mm -hmm. you know, and they're da -da 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 rapid fire questions, rapid fire. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I'm like, I just need a minute to yeah. even process like what just happened and then, you know, what to do. And then, of course, before I could, he was back. <laughs> and so we talked about last year how you remained in that situation for over 12 years. And um, yeah. Yeah. So and guys, you know, what we're doing tonight is we're just trying to, um, you know, kind of show you guys how it can begin and the escalation of it. And so right. that's what Mashari is doing tonight. She is here to yes. inform us on what she went through in her life. And she's just yes. trying to help us understand, you know, why do women stay? And so that would be my next question for you. Um, you know, that's I think they we I think women stay for different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it kind of depends on how you got into it. Um, I know, like, because it's, a, like I said, it's a steady thing. When you first meet them, they're great. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful. They're sweet. Mm -hmm. They're kind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't see all of that or it's just because I care or because mm -hmm. I love you. And then it escalates. So by the time it has escalated, we have falling in love with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. um and I, it really is a predator prey game it, I, I feel like it is it's just like how lions hunt and how animals hunt in the <laughs> wild like they they're out they're looking and they may test and kind of see what you do mm -hmm. and so they'll know by your response okay if this person you know like doesn't have a lot of close family or friends or mm -hmm. whatever so you know they're more easily to be manipulated and controlled mm -hmm. but so by the time you know everything hits the fan we have fallen in love with them um and so now we're trying to get back to that we're trying to find the person we fell in love with or we think we can save them we mm -hmm. think we can fix them uh we think we can make it better they have probably isolated us so mm -hmm. now if we did have friends we're not you know as close with our friends or with our family uh sometimes it's financial mm -hmm. um as well so you're you know if you're living together or you're married or whatever you may or may not have a car uh you may or may not have access to money mm -hmm. maybe they're controlling all the money now so you stay because of that you're ashamed we don't have anywhere else to go or basically this may be better than what i left yeah um, so some people are like, well, yeah, I have to deal with this, but at least I have, you know, mm -hmm. a house or clothes or whatever the case is where I didn't have, you know, nothing mm -hmm. or it was worse over there. So all reasons as to why we stay. Um, but I always say if I, when I see a person, male or female, mm -hmm. in a domestic violence situation, I always always want to know like what happened mm -hmm. like what happened when you were younger what happened in your childhood what happened as to why that you think that this is okay um or where you kind of lost yourself or maybe never had yourself or the self-esteem to know that you know you deserve better mm -hmm. and then once because once you're in it you're in it and we you know we see a lot of you know we know those who did not make it out of mm -hmm. their situations. And so while some people, you know, oh yeah, the girl, just call the police, girl, you'll be okay. For some, that's they don't care. Yeah. You know, that's just crazy on another level. Like mm -hmm. mine, he my ex didn't care nothing about police. Call if you want to. Um he was not scared of them. He was not intimidated by that. Um and so it's like you really have to set up a plan mm -hmm. uh to to leave to how you're gonna leave where you're gonna go what you're gonna do and that can kind of be scary um and let's be real all you know i've said it before and you know one of my my heart strings things i would you know really like to look into is getting better shelters mm -hmm. um because all shelters are not very good or safe shelters mm -hmm. you know right. everybody says well just go to a shelter and you're like have you seen, you know especially if you have children mm -hmm. Um, that becomes another issue as well, hard to move with. Um, and, you know, just 
like you said, the fear or the courage to start over and to be out here, you know, with with nothing, exactly. trying to put your life back together. It's it's hard. It's hard. Did you ever have to um, go to a shelter? I never did. Um, I had, you know, friends uh, and family, so places I could kind of go to and just kind of hang out. Um, but I won't, I won't say that I did not think about it. And I definitely want to say if you have to go, go. Um, it's just in the timing of when I when I when I initially when I initially left him it was on it was on me and he knew he was wrong mm -hmm. and so he wasn't necessarily pushing the envelope uh but the last time when he kind of put me out and was still trying to control the narrative of it um it got down to it a lot of my my parents you know were like are you sure you don't need to go to one mm -hmm. um and I was like it even if I did it was gonna have to be out of my city out of my state yeah. i was gonna have to move like that and so i was like well if i've got to do that then we've got to plan something better um you know for especially with two young young children they were babies at the time uh you know that were that were talking about something like this but it it is it's it, it it's a lot uh it is very hard it takes a lot of courage um to leave and like i said you also have to know the beast that you're dealing with mm -hmm. um so you got to know how to plan you got to know what they're capable of or incapable of mm -hmm. um and then another reason why people stay is oh well, don't you have a friend or a family i didn't want to bring my friend or family into yeah, the crazy list that's dangerous because also it is because he would have came in the house and drugged me out and he would have fought everybody in the house he like he didn't that care type of person he was the type of person when he was angry. So male or female, he did not care. Um, and so that's like, so now you're you're talking about, you know, like I always think about like famously like Jennifer Hudson. So it was her sister, her mama, like everybody. That 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 guy didn't care. He took the whole family out. And I was like, I've dealt with that crazy. Yeah. And so you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you, you don't want to bring anybody else in or anyone else to get hurt mm -hmm. so that's why we don't tend to go to you know what i'm saying family or friends um you know it's almost like i i, I would do better to have gone if i needed to to have gone to a shelter now um, it was just he, was he raised in a home that he's seen abuse yes okay yes his 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 um his father used to hit his mother so and I think uncles and granddaddies, and so you're talking just years of abuse yeah. to come so down the family line of just ab abusers. Yes. So, guys, you see how this cycle works. You know, here's a, a young man who was raised in a home where he's seen his parents fight. So he thought that was love. He thought that's how you communicated love. So when he got with this beautiful young lady who already had um, insecurity issues, you know, just growing mm -hmm. up being young, he realized mm -hmm. he was able to control her and she wouldn't answer back. And so, yeah. yeah. And so that's how that cycle begins. But thank God that Mashari got out and her children. Yes. yes and her yes. children is going to have a better life. And we praise yes. God for that because they were babies when you got out, right? Yes, we. Uh, they were eight months old when we split. Yeah, so they didn't. They so. didn't see. Thank God. Um, they, I won't say they didn't. They didn't see it. I think my son woke up one night. Really? The, you think the, he remembers one night. at that age? For a while, he was a little, he would get a little jittery really? when he would come around and raise his voice. Mm -hmm. um, I always say my son is is has always been very connected to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they understood. They, they never actually saw it. Mm -hmm. They may have seen that, like the aftermath of it, but they were so little. But I think, you know, that as they've gotten older, it may have kind of went away. Mm -hmm. Um, but when they were little, he could, I could tell when he would get a little antsy, mm -hmm. um, almost cause like, uh, I remember after one of the fights a couple weeks later, whatever, he 
um, my ex had come in and he was coming to see them and he was trying to be funny and tickle me or something and my son just kind of looked and froze and kind of went to shaking and he was crying and like no no like he didn't get it but he got it you know what i mean and it, it hit me later like he thinks it's something something else and i i'm out and i was like he may have even noticed that i tense just a little bit mm-hmm. he, he pick up on that so but i'm i am um very grateful though that yeah. i was able to uh protect them from not be not having to have have seen it yeah um and not really having to seen uh the ugly aftermath they mm-hmm. they've not ever really seen me with kind of bruises and stuff like that so you know they they kind of had to they heard about it later as as i've told my story and we've had talks that way um but i you know but i was i can at least say from what i know um like i said the only one time that i know for sure where they were kind of not caught in the middle but right off of the room to where it was happening was when they were eight months old well, I'm just so thankful that you're here with us <laughs> tonight and you're on the other side of it. So Me too. So once you, you know, got your life together, you mm-hmm. were telling me that you um actually wrote a book about your experience. And so guys, I we did. want you all, yeah, we we want you all <laughs> to purchase that book because oh my gosh, last year I read that book and I was like, "Oh my goodness, because it was it was a real story but it was suspenseful they had all kind of different things that (laughs) made you just kind of didn't want to put the book down you know yeah so talk to us a little bit about you know your book and where we can purchase it so the book is got it <laughs> it's the it's the battle for me um you can get it off of amazon you can get it on the kindle and you can also get it from my website um if you want an autograph copy www.misharibree.com um and so yes yeah. this this book i always book. tell people i was like i was like look it's got a lot in it mm-hmm. it's not i don't go as deep as i could have with it because i know that's kind of hard to read and hard to but you you know to be able to digest but i tell myself but cliff notes version she makes it out okay <laughs> uh, but it's like, it's like it's like you know you know the ending to this um that hey she i, I do make it out wow. and so this book kind of just it just i kind of answer those questions that you've Mm -hmm. asked is you know how we met Mm -hmm. uh why i stayed and how i finally left um and so that kind of deals with that and it's sprinkle you know sprinkling Mm -hmm. um a little bit of kind of my childhood and what set that up um as well as a you know a little bit of my humor a little bit you know my storytelling and my you definitely hear my voice um, but I can say that, you know, this, this was, this was, um, definitely healing because I'd been working on it for a couple of years before I finally actually just went ahead and really did it it's and excellent. put it out. And so I'm glad yeah, it's to have, I to have done you know, that. I, I really believe you should make that into a movie. I really do. Listen, I, I look. I just need a producer and a screenwriter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they can have really it. Good. Um, I I tell people I was like, I have. If you like, I tell people I was like, if you like Power or any of those shows, the original Power Ghost. Okay, I don't know about these new ones. <laughs> yeah, um, I was like, I guarantee you, <laughs> I've lived the life. Yeah, you lived uh, that life. That can, that could rival that but yeah i would love to to ha- to have it be a movie or a show or something because i think it's just so much in there and then um the Maybe like we just i need to call I, 50 cent we just need to call him. <laughs> we, we might need to like wait, what you doing sir what you, you want doing? this uh, <laughs> um but i think i i would i, I would i yeah. would love to see that because it's, it's it's a lot more that i did not put in here that could definitely go into a into a story to a movie um and then you know you were talking about on the other side of this and even uh, what i'm working on now i think i was probably working on it before i, I took a i took some time off mm-hmm. i did i was doing some more healing this year 
um, and, and just getting myself a little bit more situated in that. But um, I am writing, I, I don't necessarily call it the sequel to the book, mm -hmm. but what I do say is it, chronicles the next book the, the the book that i'm writing now the second book is yeah. okay well what happened after you got a divorce how did i go from that person mm -hmm. to this person because that required a lot of healing i always i use the i always say excuse me that while my body was fit was free mm -hmm. my mind was not mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I was still bound. I was still traumatized. I was still working, having to work through all that. Even the trauma from childhood that I thought I was okay with, I realized you're really not. And so therefore I have to work through all of that to mm -hmm. really become whole, mm -hmm. uh, to really become healthy, to become the mother, the friend, the mm -hmm. sister, the person that I wanted to be in life mm -hmm. <clears throat> and not just, you know, not just the mask mm -hmm. of, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm gonna keep going. I am, you know, strong, but keep going, but I'm, I'm bleeding. I'm leaving a trail, mm -hmm. um, in my, in, in, you know what I'm saying? In my leading, um, in my everyday, like I'm still just bleeding out. And so I had to do that work. And that work was probably just this was uh, a little hard. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It took a lot of a lot of work, a lot of reflection, a lot of getting down into it uh, to be able to do that. But the work was necessary. Yeah. Um, and now I'm able to stand here and, you know, tell all of it. It's my yeah. ugly truth. But guess what? It's mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still here. It That's has, right. it has you know, made me who I am. Yep, she made it, guys. She made it. <laughs> and we're just yes. so happy she made it. So I know you were telling me that you were doing some advocacy work um, in mm -hmm. the, in your city. Are you still working um, with the domestic violence? Uh, so I was on the domestic, I was a domestic violence advocate. Mm -hmm. So I would actually do ride alongs on the weekends uh, with the actual, with the police force. Wow. So when they would have a call, I would, we would, you know, it was, it was a couple, it was a lot of us actually that would do that. And so when they would get a domestic violence mm -hmm. call, whoever um, the officer was that we were riding with, then we would tend to be the first on the scene to kind of handle that. Um, I was also a sexual assault advocate. So mm -hmm. if someone was sexually assaulted, and, uh, you know, would have to come in. We would meet them as well as addition to answering the calls on helpline. Mm -hmm. um, and so I um, I stopped with the advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, riding, doing the ride-alongs. My children had gotten a little older mm -hmm. and so kind of running around with them. Uh, but I stayed with helpline a little while longer. Uh, now I, um, I still advocate for them. I'm always yeah, handing yeah. out their information. I, I have two speaking engagements on Sunday. I'm speaking more out about it. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to be out more um, kind of in the community and helping other organizations that are also, um, you know, um, promoting domestic mm -hmm. violence. Um, I know a, a friend of mine, she speaks to the effects of domestic violence on the children. Okay. So while her, you know, her uh, father never hit her, but the effects of watching mm -hmm. her mother, of yeah. her and her brother. And so, you know, I've got quite a few people in my circle that are out there. And so we just all kind of, you know, support each other and lean in as needed. Um, and so do that. It will always be something mm -hmm. uh, that I do. I got a call from um, a counselor today. Like she's like, hey, yeah, <laughs> I got I somebody you. here. Yeah. She's about ready to lose it. What do I need to tell her? And I was like, I got you. I gave her the information mm -hmm. and stuff. And I'm like, so it's it's always going to be, you know, um, something that I do. And I would like to get back to Helpline. Mm -hmm. um, it'll probably be about another year or so. Yeah. Though. My, my, my children are, are moving and shaking. Yeah. And it seemed like, <laughs> um, you know, and I know you've been in it, but it seemed like it would be a pretty yeah. dangerous thing to be riding with the police officers because that's a very sticky situation. It is, but they, they go in and clear the scene first. So it's not like we're running in with them. 
uh, we have to wait in the car, um, you know, until they have secured the scene and make sure that everything is safe uh, before they call us in. So they, you know, they do their job and we don't move until they tell us, you know, and so that, you know, they're looking out for us, but, mm -hmm. but guaranteed we're looking out for them too. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> we see somebody walking and moving, uh, but they, they do. And, and, you know, and usually it's not just like the one car. They usually send a couple of cars to come because of that. And they know that we're on the scene. Um, so I never, you know, it can be dangerous, but I always felt safe. I felt that they were, you know, mm -hmm. doing what needed to be done uh, to ensure that we were safe. Um, and so if it was, you know, if, if it was one of the situations where shooting or anything was happening, we would not have gotten out the car. Or they would have, you know, made sure um, that we were not to the best mm -hmm. of their ability, uh, you know, not not in harm's way. Yeah. Uh, but just dealing with those situations are sometimes hard. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, and guys, we really want you all to know that domestic violence is a crime. It is a crime. And it, it can is. get very, very serious really quickly. Can you talk to yes. us about how quickly domestic violence can can become serious? Um, it, 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 it changes in just like that, literally that quickly. You can be talking to them and um, you have some that tend to what I call rage and just kind of go off. And then I you have the ones I feel are a little bit more psychotic where they can hold it. So you can walk, they'll walk in to a room full of people looking at you, hey, talking, speaking, whatever. And then they get to you and under the, under their breath, they're like, oh, you just wait. You know, and then as soon as they can get you um, off to yourself, it's over with. Um, I, I've had that happen. My mom was actually at my house, came in, talking, just cutting up. She, he walked her to the door, made sure she got in that car and drove off. And I tell you, he turned around and it was on and popping. Uh, so it, it happens. It changes very, very quickly. Um, and in a blink of an eye, it can go from hands to weapons. Uh, so it is, it's something to be taken very serious because you never know, you really never know when the last fight could be your last fight. Um, and it can come out of, it can come out of nowhere. There's never, I, you know, I don't want, I don't want to give the false hope that oh there's a rhyme or a reason to mm -hmm. it there can be at times um but at the same time it's i always say it's what's in their world it's what's in their mind in mm -hmm. their mind you've done something wrong or so egregious that this is how it has to be fixed and it could be as simple as you you know you not having the food down or it's not a right temperature or they're having a bad day and they're just taking that out on you and don't let drugs or alcohol be something else that they abuse. Um, so you just, you, you almost live on eggshells. Um, those uh, survivors will probably, a lot of survivors will probably tell you kind of know their rhythm. So you kind of know what is going to make them mad and kind of what doesn't. And so you live your life literally on eggshells, trying to make sure that you're keeping the beast at bay. So you're, let me make sure I do this. Let me make sure I do that. Let me make sure if this is what he likes or this is what she likes. Let me do this. Let me not ask too many questions. Let me not say something because one day I'm just asking a question and I'm getting slapped upside the head. Don't question me. Da, da, da. And another time you don't ask a question, you're getting slapped upside the head. It's like, okay. So you can't, um, you, so, there's no winning. It's just. It's not, like I said, it's not. It, it, it's, it's sometimes you're just like, okay. You know, if you can get through the day and maybe all they do is raise their voice, that's a that's a win for the day because you just don't know when when, you know, a hit may come behind it. So that that's just how quickly it changes. And domestic violence is all about power and control, guys. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. They just want to control you. They and just the, want to know the forms that they can control you. The forms of abuse. Can you talk to us about the forms of abuse? Yes, you have physical abuse. You have, which is, you know, them actually putting, hitting you, putting hands on you, or even with objects. Uh, you have emotional abuse. So now they, you know, they'll tell you, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You'll never be anything without me. You're dumb. You're stupid. Just, you know, just degrading you. Mm -hmm. 
um, excuse me, emotionally and mentally, you know, playing with your emotions the way that they do, like as we said before, the love bombing. So after a fight, it's I love you, 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 I need you, you make me better, you know, until the next time you've made them mad. Uh, and so then there's also financial abuse. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they're, like I said, controlling the money, you don't have access to money. Um, you don't have access to your information. Mm -hmm. um, so, you you know, you're literally controlled by them because you mm -hmm. can't do anything if you don't have access, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to your money. Or they're watching every little penny that you spend or, you know, things such as that, the fear of mm -hmm. getting of getting cut off that way. Um, so and then, of course, there's sexual abuse um, as well. Um, being you know even it, we don't like to call it rape when it's your spouse but it's yet still rape mm -hmm. um if it's against your will if anyone is forcing you to do something against your will um then that is essentially in fact what it is um and so you know we tend to that's something else i don't think we talk a lot about that happens mm -hmm. in domestic violence situations because that's another level of violation mm -hmm um that really messes with your mind and your psyche and your body because there's you, you now don't even have control over that and we'll sweep that one up under the rug and that one may not come out until you know later way later or even as you try to get into another relationship even a healthy relationship because that's that kind of it's going to come back and rear its ugly head because they may say something or do something and it's going to be a trigger but we don't like you know we don't we don't really refer to it we you know as rape they'll just say oh he just forced me to do this or forced mm -hmm. me to do that or she you know whatever it is mm -hmm. and i'm like but think of yeah. what that really You're is violent. and how that messes with you yeah, yeah. So, wow. So did your abuser, did he spend any time in jail? Not for abusing me, he didn't. He didn't. Wow. Um, he spent time in jail for other things. So, yeah. Well, Mashari, you are absolutely good. <laughs> and I'm just so happy <laughs> that you. you are here with me tonight. And thank you so thank much you. for standing up and for speaking up. You know, because your story is helping someone tonight. We've had yeah, thank people you. come That's on it. and say, thank <laughs> you so much for sharing your story. They're loving yeah. it. Yeah, they're loving it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. And it, it, I always say, I hate I have to go through it. But if I can help or stop anyone else from ever going through it, then it has been made worth it. Yeah. I'm going to use my voice. Then I will continue to always use my voice to be like i made it through you don't have you don't have to stay in it yeah i tell anyone you can you can get out you can make it out if i can get out not if i trust me if i can get out <laughs> you can get out too you know i always say love doesn't love shouldn't hurt love doesn't hurt it shouldn't hurt at all, at all. um at all so but it you got to know that you're worth it and that's what I tell them. I said, you got to know that, that you're worth it Amen. and that there's better. So, Mashari, tell us how we can get in contact with you. You can follow me on all social media. So, um, uh, here on Instagram, I am the only Mashari Bree. Okay. Um, Facebook, I am Mashari Bree. Mm -hmm. um, and also Mashari Parks. My, okay. my Mashari Bree is my first and middle name. So, Mashari Parks. Um, I do have a website, which is uh, www.masharibree. That's M S. H A I R I B R E E okay. dot com. <clears throat> so you can uh, see, go there and follow me there as well and, and keep up. You can um, join like my little email web blast, things such as that. Um, and so all of my, my contact information is on all of those. Okay. Um, I think I, I do have, I have, have links. Uh, on Instagram, on my IG, I have links on my Facebook mm -hmm. uh, as well. So I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah, she, <laughs> she is easy to find because she really want to help 
She want to help. She want to help. I do. Yeah, I do. And so we just so. blessed to know her. And guys, thank you so much for being with us on tonight. Morning Soul Shine with Bridget and Mashari Bree. There she is. Yeah, she made it. She made it. I made it. Oh, <laughs> my son just joined. Oh, he did. Hi. He did. He's oh, not feeling too good. And, and, hi, you, he's 15, you said? He is 15 and his uh, twin sisters. Oh, yeah, wow. both of them. So um, that's the rest. I was telling about he gonna he listen. He gonna find his mama. You hear me? Oh, he loves <laughs> his mama. Be like, what she doing? <laughs> he does. I love him, and I love him. Oh, I so. know you love him. Look, he said, "Hey, yeah. hey, mama." <laughs> <laughs> well, we gonna let your mama go back to you. <laughs> he probably right. Came Catch the replay. You should be here earlier. Yeah, he wants your attention, mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us, Mashari Bree, and God bless you, and we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, as always. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you. I have one Saturday. Yeah, we're gonna oh, talk. Yeah. With, yeah, we're gonna talk with a gentleman from Jamaica, and he was raised in a home with. Uh, abuse with domestic violence so we're going to talk about childhood trauma from domestic yeah. violence so that's Saturday yeah. at 2 p.m. on Instagram that's so great you're doing yeah. so great and I love when men speak out against yeah. it because they we need more male voices yeah, speaking out keep giving keep giving us a platform that's right. give us keep giving us I'm a pla keep platform doing it. thank you so much I love you <laughs> thank you okay bye bye, bye, -bye. Bye.